that's what didn't stick. Hello, beautiful people. We're here with Casey Hansen. She is the author of this amazing book that we sell here at Oil Life, Simple Cooking with Essential Oils. She won the doTERRA cooking competition yeah. four years ago, and she just has a very active brain for cooking with essential oils. So yes. we're excited to share this moment with her and learn all about these amazing pizzas. Take Hi. it away. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here. Um, Sorry we had to change it on everybody. Some of you might now be at leadership and so you're watching a recording of this or you're not able to make it tonight. Uh, but that's okay. It, it happened, we had some snow, I had some water in my home. That same day we actually ended up like gutting a room. So it worked out for the better. But thank you for being here tonight. Uh, we do have some people here live that get to taste some of the pizza. And I'm gonna get started with the cauliflower pizza crust. So this is one that is in the book. Um, right here, in the book, page 75. So if you have it at home, you can follow along um, and make it with us. Uh, the reason why I started making cauliflower pizza crust is because I have, let's see, at the time she was a three-year-old. Uh, she's almost four. And she's in that stage, if you have kids, you know, they don't eat vegetables. So I have started incorporating vegetables in pizza crusts and breads and uh, snacks and anything that I can to get healthy food into their bodies. So that's kind of where this came from. Um, the cauliflower was the first one and that's why it's in the book. And then the two other recipes that we're sharing tonight will be in my new book that I'm gonna start working on and you should see it in a few months. So, I simply just grated some cauliflower. Now this is actually a half head of cauliflower that will equal about two cups. Of course, it depends on the size of the cauliflower that you're using, uh, but I'm usually able to make anywhere from two to sometimes three batches of the recipe. So this is one that will freeze well. If you wanna grate a whole head of cauliflower and use the whole thing, you can actually just, um, measure the cauliflower and add the eggs or um, cheese and adjust that accordingly. And these you can freeze. So cook them first and then throw them in the freezer and use them when you're ready. So I just have two cups of cauliflower that's grated. You can also buy the riced cauliflower. That will work too. You're just looking for a really small texture so that you can shape it into the pizza dough. So two cups of cauliflower, about a cup of mozzarella cheese, and can you reach behind you and grab the eggs out of the fridge? I'm gonna show you guys a trick with garlic. So I like to add minced grated garlic for flavor. This is a microplane. You can also get a cheese grater. Uh, the small ones that are for like Parmesan, and I just grate the garlic directly into the cauliflower, and it adds a little bit of uh, the moisture, it pulls out the moisture and it makes it really fine. Can you guys see that? It's like a paste. It's like a, just a garlic, I don't know if I'm even close enough for you guys to see it, but it just makes it so that you get the flavor without eating a big, huge chunk of the garlic. It will just almost uh, disappear and disperse right into the cauliflower. So that's gonna go in. And then for the eggs, see these lovely eggs? I have chickens at home and I love their beautiful eggs. I'm one of those nerds that walks around a grocery store and I'm like excited about the beautiful food. I go to a farmer's market, I'm like, oh, it's beautiful food. So I love the fun chicken eggs. I tell them thank you. And, and uh, so it's always fun to cook with pretty food. You could do this with the colored cauliflower, the green or the purple or the orange cauliflower and really make it fun for kids. Um, so I just put one egg in here in this one, I use my trio. Thyme, rosemary, and marjoram are my, my favorite three. They're like a trinity that I use in a lot of my cooking. So uh, because it's like a good fail safe, I use this in the cauliflower pizza crust. And I'm adding it to the egg because if you accidentally add too much oil, you can throw the one egg away instead of ruining the whole entire batch of what you're cooking. And this actually happened earlier this week when I was uh, making extra crusts 
for this class, I added three drops of rosemary, <laughs> which would be extremely overpowering. So, let's see. My rosemary is to that point where it will drop a whole bunch at one time if I'm not careful. Um, so I add it to the egg, so if I need to throw that away, um, I can. And then one drop marjoram. So you can change this out. You could do a toothpick swirl of oregano. You could do basil. Uh, you could do any of your favorites. And then mix it up really well with the egg because if you mix it in the egg, it's gonna emulsify throughout the pizza dough a little bit easier. So I just put that in. Now I'm doing this one first because it has an interesting process. We're gonna cook it halfway and then flip it. So I wanted to be able to show everybody a trick for the flip. And you just combine this and stir it well. Oh, you know what, it's two eggs. Just kidding. Isn't that great? Uh, I was wondering why it wasn't coming together. So it does depend on the cauliflower, the size of the eggs. You just want it to be able to um, get to where it's holding to itself so that it's not too dry, um, but also not too runny. So if you are using riced cauliflower that's frozen, you may need to squeeze some of that moisture out. You do not want too much wet ingredients. I feel bad because I probably can't see. Okay, so I did wash my hands before we started. I am one of those cooks that likes to get uh, dirty and really get in there but this is a good way to shape your pizza too so I'm gonna do mini pizzas tonight so that they're smaller and we can all kind of taste some you could do this in any shape you could do one big pizza you could do two small pizzas at Valentine's Day we were doing them in the shape of a heart um, so it's a lot of fun and you just want to get it on your paper this will fit about five of these smaller ones you sprayed that paper. I did, yes. This paper has been sprayed. It's a wax or parchment paper. You could use either, or if you have a, a silpat um, mat, the silicone mats, those will work really well too. You just want it so it doesn't stick. So yes, I did spray the parchment so that it will release when we do that flip. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. So what I've done is I've got the five little mounts and you just want to Get them to about a quarter of an inch and just kind of hold it, um, press them down, and mold it into little pizzas. And the eggs will kind of bind it as it cooks, but I like to just kind of get a shape in there. And then this is gonna go into a 350 degree oven for 25 minutes and then we'll show you the flip and the trick of how we do that. Mm -hmm. so, I came prepared. Okay, mm -hmm. so these will go in and it does depend on your oven. I was telling them a little bit earlier, I have an old oven. So you'll wanna watch them. You want them to get some color, some golden color on top. Uh, the cauliflower will actually get moderately dark, um, but it doesn't taste burnt. It's just a, you know, like a caramelization and it doesn't ruin it or make it taste bad. So this first one, you'll just kind of want to look for some browning and then when we flip it, it may get fairly dark. But you'll kind of smell your nose nose. Your nose may know when that's done before the timer goes off. So I'm gonna clean up just a little bit and we will do the zucchini breadsticks. I had to reach in the fridge again. There's two little containers of zucchini and chicken. Now this one is actually, I did use fresh zucchini and if you've ever, thank you, baked or cooked with zucchini before, you know that it can release a lot of moisture while you're baking. So in this, you want to actually shred it before and put it in the oven to dry out um, so that it is not too wet. Um, you can see this one got some of that caramelization, that darker color I was talking about. It actually just adds flavor that I like, that I've come to like quite a bit. 
So this one, we're actually not gonna flip, so I'm not gonna do the, the paper, I'm just gonna spray it. do about two zucchini I did zucchini and squash so you could do one zucchini one squash it's kind of whatever you have in your garden if it's a big zucchini then you're gonna to want to measure it you only need about two two and a half cups um, of the freshly grated zucchini it kind of does shrink down after you've dried it out but we'll put that in here do you add fresh garlic to this one too I'm going to tonight you don't Is have to you, she can't eat fresh okay garlic. then I will yeah so, yeah, the other one has garlic. Um, no, the other one does not have garlic. Um, so garlic is one of those things you can or can't, you know, you don't have to add. Um, we will not add it. That's okay. The recipe doesn't have it. Let me just grab my recipe. Now this one's a little bit different. Kind of the same idea, a vegetable and then um, the eggs. But this one has some flour. So I'm just getting my recipe for us. Now in this I actually use coconut flour. It's a different texture um, and it's going to help kind of dry out the zucchini if there's any moisture that's left in there. So we've got about two cups, two and a half cups of grated zucchini. I actually did add salt, about a quarter teaspoon of salt right into the flour to make it easier for tonight. And this is about a quarter cup of coconut flour. Now you could probably use other flours. Um, and adjust, coconut flour is one that's a drier flour, so we're actually gonna use three eggs. If you're using a different kind of flour, you may only need two. So I would suggest do a little bit of flour and do maybe start with two eggs and then add another if you need it. It's just kind of, you want a good texture where it's holding together, but that it's not too dry. So I'll get the eggs again, try not to crack it all over <laughs> the countertop. And I'm just gonna use the same bowl because the flavors are a lot the same it's similar a lot of it has already came out now when you're using essential oils always start with the least amount and add more if you need to so you can add I'll show you how to do um, oregano one of the hot oils uh, you'll only want to use a teaspoon uh, excuse me a toothpick swirl or you can actually do a half drop by adding it into a teaspoon and removing some of that um, in this one, we'll just use the full drops again. I'm gonna do, you know, we'll do a toothpick swirl of oregano. So I have a clean toothpick. This is oregano. I like it in the breadsticks, especially because we're not gonna add sauce to it. Um, so we're gonna add a lot of flavor in here. And you just dip it here in the center and you'll get some remnants of oil. And then we'll dip that in the eggs and swirl it in. Again, I like to do the eggs. I like to add oils to a liquid or the most liquid ingredient if possible so that it can completely emulsify it and it's just gonna uh, spread it out a little bit more throughout the dough and then this is the basil now the reason why I love the oils so much is because basil for example is one that I can't grow I've tried growing basil for two years and I kill it every single time <laughs> And it makes me so sad because I want to have a huge herb garden with tons of herbs and have the, you know, beautiful flowers and yeah, I, I can't. Do you do it inside or outside? <laughs> I've tried oh. outside. And my husband, he claims he has a green thumb, but they all die. So I like that we have the herbs. I have a year round herb garden in the oils and I'm able to use them that way. So I'm just stirring these three eggs together really well. I, again, I have a toothpick swirl of oregano and one drop of basil. And we'll just put that right in. And again, you can use any oils that you like. These are just some that I like to use. Let's see, and the cheese. So the cheese and the eggs are kind of what's gonna help these vegetables bind together into a crust. and they make it yummy. Mm. But the reason why I like the oils so much is because I am trying to incorporate so many vegetables and I have little mouths, or you know, sometimes people don't like the flavor of what you're cooking that's healthy, and so the oils kind of add that flavor that they're not expecting, and so then they want more, and it's healthy, and it's enjoyable for them to eat. 
Have you noticed that when you cook the oils, it changes the flavor? Now, that's one thing too, where these are being cooked, I am adding full drops and I'm not, I know some of that will uh, subside if you were using them fresh. In the sauce, it will be fresh, so that's why I don't use a full drop of oil. So you can add it, keep it as mild or make it as strong as you like, but do keep that in mind, thank you. If you are gonna cook them or add them to a warm dish, some of that flavor will diminish a little bit. So I do, if you do want something that's strong, you can add it to a topper. That's one of the things in my book is I talk about these different methods. The toothpick swirl, the half a drop with a spoon, adding them to toppers. So um, some of my favorite toppers are like sour cream with lime. Mm -hmm. um, the sauce, I use fresh, you know, a drop of the basil and it tastes like I've added fresh basil in there. Um, so a lot of it is just knowing that some of it will be stronger and some of it is going to go away. If a recipe called for mint, would that be spearmint? Is that the same? It depends. Yeah. There's peppermint and spearmint. It just depends. And even um, some artificial mints are wintergreen. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on what flavor. If you have them at home, you could smell and see what flavor you're going for or if you have something to compare it to. So this we're just forming into the shape of breadsticks. Now this, I'm just gonna top with cheese when it's finished, when it's completed, and have that as an option. But all these crusts are actually interchangeable. You could do the chicken breadsticks or cauliflower breadsticks just by adding the sauce and toppings or keeping it plain with cheese or even just a little bit of olive oil and Parmesan. I mean, there's so many different options. Once you have the crust, you're kind of set and you can do whatever you would like. I have even seen where people will get the cauliflower or the zucchini and use it as a bread. They'll like grill a mm -hmm. cheese sandwich in between the two. So this is a really good base to have kind of in your in your kitchens because you can use it in different ways if you are trying to eat healthy and incorporate more vegetables. We do a garden so a lot of the time we have a ton of zucchini and we don't know what to do with it and so that's where some of this comes from is I'm desperate to use up some of that zucchini. Um, zucchini. The zucchini, you can freeze it if you're baking it. If you're going to try and do a fresh preparation, you won't want it. But sometimes when you freeze the cauliflower or the, the zucchini um, and you bake it, it doesn't really change the texture. So that's why these crusts will freeze well and you can reuse them because they, they don't change it in baked goods. So let's check these. show you see how it's got the color Hang on. Grab it better. see how it's got a little bit of the golden darker color Let's see if these are set up enough I'm gonna let these cool for just a little bit and then we'll try and do the flip for them and I'm gonna swap out and we'll show you the chicken pizza crust Yeah, it's starting to smell really good here. Sorry, you guys don't have smell-o-vision and you can't smell it. Well, ventilation is good. It might help. <laughs> um, like I said, you'll want to keep an eye on some of these crusts. Uh, ovens bake differently. This one's cooking faster than my one at home. So your nose will know when it's smelling like it's maybe done or ready to be flipped check on it and see and make a note <laughs> okay so the third one that we're gonna do is a chicken pizza crust again I'm trying to incorporate healthy foods without um, running to the you know local delivery pizza joint um, so we're just trying different crusts and different things to get my kids to like it. The chicken crust has been a big hit. Now this one I like a lot too because it has a little bit more of a crispy texture. This is actually canned chicken that I've used. And just like the zucchini, I put this in the oven and dry it out a little bit before. And then uh, it doesn't have that moisture. You don't have to worry about it, you know, seeping all over and to the bottom of the oven. 
And so just grab, this is one can of the chicken, just yay Costco, thank you for your big awesome cans. <laughs> and then I spread it out on a cookie sheet, just like this actually, parchment, line it, um, let it kind of get rid of some of the water, about 350 for 10 minutes, just until it looks dry. You'll see what I'm talking about. It, it kind of looks dry and just gets rid of that moisture. Now it's kind of funny because we're adding moisture right back into it, but to have the control of the moisture is what's important so that you're getting the right amount. So I'm just gonna put the cheese in my measuring vessel. So another, a cup of cheese, wrong cheese. This is gonna be a little different. This one calls for Parmesan cheese. Quarter cup of Parmesan. So this one might taste like And then an egg. So this one is only three ingredients. Four. Chicken, Parmesan, and egg. Ignore the mozzarella that I added, I was wrong. <laughs> and the oils. Now this one I like to again add the rosemary um, because to me rosemary tastes like a rotisserie chicken. When I think herby flavor, I think rosemary. So I'm gonna add rosemary and thyme into this one. And just one egg will get the texture that we're looking for. And rosemary and thyme is actually what I used um, for the breakfast quiche recipe. So I don't know if you were in doTERRA four years ago. Some of you were, some of you were not. You may have heard of the doTERRA cooking challenge. They told us to try and use four different oils in a recipe and send it in. And I made a breakfast quiche and I used thyme and rosemary. So uh, these two are kind of close to my heart. <laughs> I love them, I use them a lot. Uh, <clears throat> but that was, like I said, four years ago. I've now had two kids and for four years I stayed home and, and cooked. I've actually been in doTERRA for six years and I have, it was a cooking class that introduced me to it so I have cooked the whole time, and I have many, many recipes um, because it's a challenge for me to use the oils in everything that I'm making, or almost everything. Um, almost every single day I'm trying to incorporate them somehow in what I'm cooking. It's a fun challenge for myself, and then I have all these recipes that I've made and enjoyed and experimented with, and I know that you can have good flavors. So we'll just stir this up. And again, you just want it to where it comes together and will kind of hold to itself. Now this one will have a different texture because of the Parmesan cheese. It, like I said, it's a drier texture, um, but we like this one. It's my husband's favorite by far. We do a sauce of um, Frank's buffalo sauce. So it's a hot, it's chicken and buffalo sauce. And then we just put cheese on it. And it's one of his favorites. He takes it for lunch and and it's really good. I also have some that we pre-made that's a chicken bacon ranch. So it has a ranch sauce on it with bacon and onions. So it's a lot of fun to just really let your imagination run wild. So before I do the chicken on this pan, I'm gonna show you the flip for the cauliflower. Now this is no longer hot, which is probably good. So you just wanna get another piece of parchment and spray it and set it over the top of the cauliflower, that's cauliflower pizza crust that's there. And then you take a pan and invert it over the top and flip. So now they're upside down. I just pull the new parchment back onto the pan and it's flipped. And you can just pull this right off. And now this part will be cooked and baked just a little bit more. It already has some of the color. Let me get this to where you can see it. So you can see those edges are already crisping up a little bit. If you watch the Food Network and am Burrell, you know what I mean. Brown food tastes good. <laughs> so, we're gonna just turn this bad boy off. Okay, so the zucchini is done 
two. Seven's pretty different than mine, but that's okay. So the cauliflower pizza crust only needs to go in for a little bit longer. We're just looking, it's almost already baked through. We're just looking to get almost like a crusty finish on the top so that the toppings don't get it too wet. And Can I ask a question? question? Yeah. So have you ever played around with like egg substitutes for those that can't have eggs? And I have not. Eggs? Not yet. Um, I think that you probably easily could. I know in a, I make a dough, a bread, a play on bread dough that has cream cheese in it. And I wonder if you could use cream cheese as a substitute of an egg. I feel like it would hold it. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but do you see this texture? It will just kind of hold together. That's what you're looking for. It's just something that will kind of hold together a little bit. So I wonder if a little bit of cream cheese would give you that texture just so that you have it um, to hold. Now I'm gonna just do probably three of the chicken. But that's a good question. I actually would, would like to maybe try and see if we could get it to work. I Like I said, I know there's a dough that I make that is cheese and cream cheese and I think you could probably maybe put a little bit of cream cheese in here maybe like a quarter cup instead of the egg mm -hmm. and see how it works. It would actually probably taste really good. Maybe try a dessert pizza if you're daring. Do like a zucchini. It might be good with a zucchini one. A Nutella. Has anybody had Nutella pizza? <laughs> okay. I spent some time in Italy, so it sounds insane, but it is amazing. Or chocolate. Like sometimes people will do chocolate on pizza. So again, I'm just forming this into whatever shape you want. And it's just, you want to pat it down or roll it. You could put parchment over the top of this and roll it out to about a quarter of an inch. You don't want it too thick because that will change the time. And that's what's going to make the timing different too, is the thickness of the pizza crust. So there's a lot of factors. Just kind of keep an eye on it when the edges are starting to brown and you're getting some color. Pull the pieces out. So now we'll get these in and I'll show you some of the finished products and a sauce, a very easy pizza sauce and spaghetti. Like I use it for a few things, but it's one of my favorite pizza sauces. Okay. Let me swap these bad boys out. Tower of Pizza. <laughs> okay, so I'll show you a really easy sauce. Now, if you have fresh tomatoes in your garden, that's going to change this sauce. You can use um, the fresh tomatoes and the essential oils. You may need to cook it down a little bit to bring out some of that sweetness. I like to just get the fire roasted tomatoes. I love the flavor of the fire roasted. It just imparts a different dimension and I really do like it. This one actually has garlic already in it so I don't have to use my grater and grate that inside. Um, but you can get whatever you want. I do like canned tomatoes just for the ease, just to make it easy and simple. But to make it taste not like it's out of a can, that's why I like to add the essential oils. I'm not gonna add all of it because I don't know if we'll be able to mix it. Almost. Oh, you know what? We'll be fine. There we go. Okay, so I put that in there. And then in here, I'm going to use oregano. Oregano and pizza sauce just goes together like peas and carrots. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you the half drop method. I don't even know how. I do have some of this on my Instagram and my highlights like I show how to do this so I just put one drop of oil in the spoon and I have a little bit of paper towel well, there's no way you guys can see that but let's see if I can show you this so the corner of the paper towel is just soaked up some of that oil just the corner you can see 
that oil is now on the paper towel. So I'm just now going to get this spoon and what's left, the residue of the oil, I will stir into the sauce. And then I do like to add basil too. Basil to me, basil oil is the one that tastes just fresh and summer. It just reminds me of pizza, the fresh um, leaves of the basil that you get on the, the pizzas. So I do like to do one full drop of basil. And then if you have a blender or food processor, I mean, definitely use that. I have a little hand um, immersion blender that I brought today. Now, if you actually like your sauce chunky, just stir it really good and you can have it chunky. I am gonna mix it a little bit so it's a smoother texture. And then I'll show you some of the finished products. Excuse the noise for a minute. And then that's So just blend and mix until that is the consistency that you like. I do keep it a little chunky. So it's almost like when you order tomatoes on your pizza and you have that yummy cooked tomato flavor. Uh, but it's also runny enough that it's a sauce as well. So I've just got some, some chunks in there. I, sorry guys, we just need to have you all come to Utah and come to the class so you can see and smell and taste. Um, but, so we just have that mixed up now and you can put it on the sauce and do toppings. Now some of the fun toppings, you could do anything. You could do Alfredo sauce, barbecue sauce, um, obviously red sauce. I have some ranch sauce that we did on the chicken pizza. And the breadsticks have nothing but cheese on them because they're just breadsticks. So, show you guys this fun stuff without. So you can see, I did mini, they're just the mini sizes. So this is like a chicken barbecue, got some barbecue sauce on that. Breadsticks, it's got just the cheese. Now if you wanted to actually do zucchini pizza, you could and just put the sauce and veggies or whatever. This is a cauliflower with ranch and vegetables. And this is the chicken um, with the ranch and bacon and stuff. So many, many options. The red sauce will put on some of these and these guys will taste them. Does anybody have questions online or does anybody have questions here? The chicken ones are not, not uh, done yet. We'll just pull them out. They don't need to be flipped or anything. The cauliflower is the only one um, that I like to flip just to get the color on both sides. The zucchini and the chicken I just put in and pull it out and top it. Um, and then just simply put toppings on it, melt the cheese, heat up the toppings if you need to. Um, we have everything from pepperoni to sausage to more chicken, more vegetables. You could do anything. These are a great base and the options are endless. Mm -hmm. So are there any questions? Has anybody wrote any questions online? We did ask about your book. But My book. Okay, well, I was, let me tell you a little bit about the book. She may have responded. So in this book, you have the cauliflower pizza crust recipe and the pizza sauce uh, recipe. Um, like I said, I have a new one. I'm just getting it figured out to when I'll set a date. Um, it's gonna be healthier cooking, so it will have the zucchini, it will have the cauliflower pizza crust as well, um, but it is available right now here. The chicken pizza crust and the zucchini breadsticks or pizza crust um, will be in the next. One. And I believe we have we have an email that we could send out um, that has these recipes on it. So it's kind of like a sneak peek before the book is done um, that we'll send to the people that have registered for the class. The book is available here in Oil Life. Um, this one is a bound copy. This one is coming soon to Oil Life. Um, so if you want a bound one or the classic bound are available now. Actually, they will be within a week. So you want to get uh, keep an eye online, and they'll open back up and be available soon. And I think that's it. So thank you so much for joining. If you do have a question and you need to message me or email me, please do. And we're gonna put some toppings on. So thank you so much for joining. Let them know your socials. My oh yeah. So I tell you, follow me on Instagram, and I have all these stories. Um, it is rocking it with oils on. Facebook page, same thing, rocking it with oils, and Instagram, 
and rocking it with oils. I've been tagged this week, um, so you can follow back and see that. I know there's one today, so you can go follow and contact me that way. And my book is there with like recipes, and the new book information will be on social media as well. Awesome. Let's do it. Thank you all so much for joining us. A Thank copy you. of this video will be available in 24 hours. Yes. Let us know we if you have you. questions. We love you to our life.